Hi, in this video we're going to talk a little bit about cartilage and uh, the histology of cartilage. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by just describing some of the components of the tissue. So specifically we'll talk about cells and the matrix, uh, very briefly really. Um, so under cells I have listed fibroblasts, chondroblasts, and chondrocytes. Now fibroblasts are there because they are part of the connective tissue that surrounds the cartilage in many cases. So they're not really cartilage specific, they are just kind of there around the outside. Okay, so we're not really going to focus on those. Uh, what we're going to focus on are the other two types of cells, which are chondroblasts and chondrocytes. Now I'd like to start really quickly by again pointing out the um, suffixes here, chondroblast and chondrocyte. Okay. So again, the chondro refers to cartilage, so anything that has chondro in it refers to cartilage. Okay, so this part right here tells you that it has something to do with cartilage. And as we discussed in the previous lab, uh, a cell type that ends in blast is the more active mature form of the cell, whereas the cell that ends in sight is generally the less active, oops, too many S's, less active, not inactive, but just less active, and more mature. cell type. Okay, so again you're going to see the same sort of nomenclature show up again and again as we look at the different tissue types. Okay, so again right there we just need to know that there are two different cell types to worry about in this type of tissue, chondroblasts and chondrocytes. Okay, in terms of the matrix again this is a type of con um, con uh, this is a type of uh, connective tissue. I should probably indicate that here. So if it's a connective tissue okay, it's just a specialized kind of connective tissue so again the ECM is going to be the main component here so this is the majority of the tissue is going to be the ECM and the minority will be the cells and so this um, extracellular matrix is going to have type 2 collagen. This will be one of the few places in the body where you will find type 2 collagen. Um, except in fibrocartilage, a specific type of cartilage where you actually will see both type 1 and type 2. In the, other uh, in the other matrices of other cartilage, we tend to only find type 2 collagen. Okay? Uh, and the main really component in that ECM is going to be the proteoglycans and hyaluronic acids. So this right here, glycosaminoglycans, as you might recall, are highly sulfated. highly sulfated and therefore they are very negative. Okay, And because of that they hold on to a lot of water. Which is very important because the matrix itself is not vascularized. So cartilage itself is avascular. So that means it has no blood vessels. So there are no vessels passing through it, which means that all the cells that you find in the cartilage, so all these, these would be chondrocytes, for example, 
the way that they're going to get their nutrients is by diffusion. So the nutrients will have to diffuse from blood vessels on the outside of the cartilage. So there's going to be a lot of diffusion going on from far away to get to these cells within the matrix. Okay, That's going to uh, cause some limitations for this type of tissue uh, in terms of how large it can become. Um, but basically it also means that uh, this tissue, because of the amount of water, is also very more difficult to compress. So because we have lots of water, it's not compressible. Okay, which is going to be very important because cartilage is very much a structural component um, that needs to be able to resist compression. Okay. So these glycosaminoglycans, remember, they exist in the form of proteoglycans. Which, as you recall, there's a protein core. And then we have these glycosaminoglycans kind of sticking away from that protein core in many directions. And when it comes to cartilage, we have a lot of glycosaminoglycans around a protein core. So very much that bottle brush sort of appearance to these things so that we have a lot of water packed within this matrix. Okay? So again, that water is going to allow for uh, the structural properties of cartilage, which makes it non-compressible because there's lots of water. Um, and so again, it's not compressible, but also allows for easy diffusion. Okay, So because we have lots of water, we also have easy diffusion. Water also means easy diffusion. Okay, which needs to happen because again, cartilage is avascular. Okay. Alright, so that's all I'm gonna say about the actual matrix itself. I'm going to go on to talk about the cells themselves and animate the tissue. The last thing I should I guess I should mention is that because of these proteoglycans and specifically the glycosaminoglycans, the ECM in cartilage tends to be very basophilic. So it's basophilic because of these sulfated glycosaminoglycans. Okay? All right, let's move on to the cells themselves. Let's talk about chondroblasts and chondrocytes. Chondroblasts are found in the chondrogenic layer of the perichondrium. There's a lot of chondro, chondro, chondro in there. So let's break that down a little bit. Okay, uh, These are cells that are the immature form of the cell. And so we have is basically a cell that is quite actively making lots of matrix. So we have a nucleus. We have the cell itself and the cell is going to sit on the surface of the cartilage matrix. So it's going to start producing this matrix material. So I'm going to make this a small piece of matrix, let's say. Okay. And so what we have is secretion of these glycosaminoglycans, the type 2 collagen, all of these things are being secreted by the chondroblast. So it's very actively producing lots and lots of proteins for export and so it's going to happen that over time again we're going to have a basophilic matrix here so I'm going to just color that in Over time, what's going to happen is that the cell is going to eventually become enveloped by this matrix. As it's, as it's secreting it, it's kind of going to be 
surrounded by it and so as that happens because that secretion doesn't have to be directional again that matrix production can be going off this way as well and so eventually once it becomes surrounded by the ECM it is known as a chondrocyte so this is a chondrocyte and any cell that will be on the surface of this matrix will be known as a chondroblast we have a piece of cartilage so there's the piece of cartilage we're going to kind of zoom out a little bit so and draw it at a much smaller scale so here's a chondroblast sorry chondrocyte chondrocyte within this piece of cartilage okay so we have mature cells embedded within the matrix, these are chondrocytes. Now we're going to have chondroblasts on the surface, maybe I'll do those in red. Uh, that's not, not because they look red, just so that we have a different color for them. So we have some chondro blasts on the surface which are going to maybe I shouldn't do those in red I'm a little limited by the number of colors I have here um, okay I'm going to just stick with blue for now okay so we've got chondro blasts on the outer surface so these are chondroblasts okay, so again these are on the surface of the cartilage matrix so this is the matrix As I mentioned before, uh, cartilage is not vascularized. So that means that we need to have blood vessels around the outside. Okay? So there's a region around the outside that's going to be more fibrous. So these would be collagen fibers of just connective tissue. This is just connective tissue around the outside. Okay, and so within this region, we would also have blood vessels. blood vessels and so this is where the nutrients and oxygen that are supplying this cartilage will be found 
within this region here. Okay. Now, within that connective tissue, that connective tissue had to be produced by something, and so that something that the cell that would be producing this would be fibroblasts. So. And so what we have here is this uh, basophilic matrix of the cartilage, which is avascular. And then we have this more eosinophilic material around the outside, which is very highly vascularized and produced by fibroblasts. And so what we have here is this kind of a subdivision, this material out here from the edge all the way to where the chondroblasts are is referred to as the perichondrium. Now, the perichondrium, again, um, watch out for prefixes and suffixes. So you will see peri showing up fairly frequently here. And so, peri means to surround something be around something. So around the perimeter, for example, right? So surrounding something. Surrounding something, okay? And that something being chondrium. And you know that chondrium, anything, anything that has to do with chondro refers to cartilage. So surrounding cartilage, this is the layer that we're talking about. So perichondrium is a layer of material that surrounds cartilage. Perichondrium is composed of a chondrogenic layer and a fibrogenic layer. So the fibrogenic layer here is the part that is composed of fibroblasts and blood vessels and all of this collagen. So I'm going to just kind of highlight that here in yellow. Okay, so from the outer edge to just where the chondroblasts start, all of that is the fibrogenic layer. And then the chondrogenic layer is where the chondroblasts are. That's the chondrogenic layer right here. So, right there, okay? So hopefully that kind of helps you to understand that initial statement that they are found in the chondrogenic layer of the perichondrium. The perichondrium is that material that surrounds, the tissue that surrounds the outside of the cartilage, and the chondroblasts themselves are found within the innermost layer where you would find chondroblasts. Now, chondroblasts are fairly basophilic. Um, as you might imagine, they produce lots of proteins for export, and so they have abundant rough ER, and which is why they are basophilic. And they're kind of flattened on the surface of the cartilage itself. Uh, now, they develop from mesenchyme cells. We've talked about mesenchyme cells in the previous lab. So these are the kind of stem cells of connective tissue. Um, and so they will be kind of the, the starting point for many different tissue types. And so they develop from the, or differentiate from mesenchyme cells and start laying down cartilage matrix around themselves. And when they, as I mentioned earlier, when they become surrounded by matrix, they are become known as chondrocytes. Which brings us to the next slide. Chondrocytes. And so here, these um, usually appear to be larger under the microscope. Um, they still have fairly basophilic cytoplasm because they are still producing stuff. They are producing the matrix. They're just simply producing enough to maintain the matrix around themselves. Um, now, the note says here that they may have some lipid deposits, and that's because they, as you might imagine, may sometimes be without nutrients, um, since nutrients have to travel to them by diffusion. Uh, if the cartilage becomes fairly large, that um, diffusion may become less and less efficient. And so these cells will sometimes store some extra energy for themselves 
um, and that tends to have take the form of lipid deposits. Okay. Now, as I mentioned earlier, they are completely surrounded by matrix, um, and as you can see here in this uh, image, we have multiple chondrocytes. And what happens during slide preparation, as you may remember from last week, is there's some cell shrinkage that happens. And so what you're seeing here is the chondrocyte. And the matrix is out here. And then there's this kind of an empty space that you see next to the chondrocyte. So the edge of the matrix, the matrix is right here. And so what we have is kind of an empty space, and that is known as a lacuna. It's basically a little cave within which this chondrocyte lives. So I mean, maybe just. This right here is the lacuna. So you can see this empty space there. That is referred to as a lacuna. Okay? So, again, basically, uh, the matrix itself is a fairly solid material, and so if you're going to have a cell sitting within that, it's going to have a little space that it's going to sit within, and that space is referred to as a lacuna. Okay? Um, now, one of the things about chondrocytes um, that is different from what you will learn about later on in bone is that these cells are able to divide. Okay, So even though this matrix is fairly rigid and fairly um, tough and dense, uh, it is still possible for these cells to kind of remodel themselves or remodel this matrix and to make it grow from within. Okay, And so you can add more matrix from the inside. Okay, And so chondrocytes are capable of mitosis. They are mitotic and so they can reproduce and to produce little clumps or groups of cells and these are known as isogenic groups. And so periodically what you'll notice is there will be cells that are very close to one another. So there's kind of a two that are a little out of focus here for example. You can see one that's visible and then the other one here is kind of out of the plane of section by these two cells here are kind of sharing a lacuna right now and that would be an isogenic group. Okay, Eventually these cells will start to produce a matrix to separate themselves from one another um, but that matrix will be a little bit different from the surrounding matrix and so what you're seeing for example out here at this end is there's one cell here and there's another lacuna here where another cell would have been it's a little, a little bit out of the plane of section but I want you to notice that the matrix, let me just pick a different color, the matrix here that surrounds this cell and its neighbor is a little bit more basophilic than the other matrix. So this is referred to as territorial matrix. Bit more basophilic because it's more freshly made. So there's more glycosamine glycans more closely packed together, and so there's more basophilic staining there. Whereas the matrix that's further away from that, so maybe I'll pick a green color here. So this matrix out here is a bit more light staining, and this would be the interterritorial matrix, so in between territorial matrices. Interterritorial. So it's in between the ter territorial matrices. Okay, so um, the territorial matrix is more freshly made. The interterritorial matrix is a little bit more mature, a little bit less basophilic. Okay, and so you can kind of see where the isogenic groups are by looking at which ones are sharing a territorial matrix. So which ones had more recently divided. Okay, so that I think takes care of the cell types. There's just one more thing to mention before we go into the tissue types, and this is the type of growth. 
So what I just talked about with the isogenic groups refer is something that is known in general as interstitial growth. Okay, interstitial means from within. Okay, so interstitial growth is what we see here. For example, right there we have uh, an isogenic group. So we got three cells here. There probably will be a fourth one somewhere out of the plane of section. So these have recently divided. You can see how much basophilic staining there is surrounding all three of these cells. They are sharing a territorial matrix, which is relatively freshly made. So that's an isogenic group. This is showing us that these cells have undergone mitosis very recently. So that's interstitial growth. A positional growth refers to growth from the outside. So this is the growth that we're talking about when we talk about chondroblasts producing more matrix from the outside. So you have out here some chondroblasts in this region somewhere. And it's very difficult sometimes to really tell where exactly that cartilage begins in some of these slides. But somewhere in this region, what we have are a bunch of chondroblasts and they are laying down fresh matrix from outside and so making the cartilage grow in thickness. So in general, a positional growth uh, tends to result in increased thickness. of a cartilage structure, whereas interstitial growth tends to increase the length of a cartilage structure. Okay? And so again, apositional growth results from chondroblasts laying down fresh matrix and over time becoming embedded within the matrix and becoming part of that cartilage and becoming chondrocytes and more chondroblasts on the outside of that, continuing to lay down more matrix on top of that. Whereas interstitial growth is chondrocytes themselves dividing, so doing mitosis, and then laying down matrix to kind of separate them away from one another. And that again results in more growth and an increase in the, the, the size of that cartilage. Okay? So um, that's it for the uh, basics of cartilage cells and the matrix. Let's really quickly run through the types of cartilage. And so we have our three different types. Uh, two of them are very similar to each other, hyaline and elastic cartilage are very similar to one another. And then fibrocartilage was kind of a special case. So let's take a look at them individually. The xylem cartilage. This is, as you can see hopefully here, the perichondria. that in this slide you are able to make out the fact that roughly from here outwards we have lots of individual collagen fibers visible. So this is the fibrogenic layer. And in fact there's kind of a granular sort of appearing sort of structure here. We have little granules, this is a capillary, so we're looking at a blood vessel right here, longitudinal section through one of these, okay, so we know we're looking at the um, perichondrium, okay, and so the region that is right at the edge where it starts to look a little bit more smooth, is likely to be the chondrogenic layer. So the cells that are in this region are likely to be chondroblasts. Okay. So again, that's the chondrogenic layer. And so the rest of this over here is the actual cartilage matrix and cartilage tissue. That's what you're seeing here. Okay. Now this is very commonly found in articular surfaces of joints. Now articular cartilage doesn't have a perichondrium generally, so it's usually a very smooth sort of cartilage, very smooth surface. Uh, articular surfaces of joints are the regions on your bones. So you know the, the bone. When you have two bones kind of coming together to form a joint. The 
articular surface is this part right here. Okay, this is the part that needs to be very, very smooth so that you have the two bones moving past one another without any friction. So these are the articular surfaces. Okay, they are nice and smooth. And again, they are not easily compressed, which is why they can um, deal with a lot of stress placed on them. Uh, but again, the smooth sur smoothness of that surface is actually very, very important so you can have bones moving past one another fairly easily. Now, this hyaline cartilage does have a little bit of perichondrium, but that perichondrium would be out here at the very edges where there is no uh, contact with the neighboring bone, so this is where the perichondrium would be. regions right here. The rest of the stuff that's in blue is just basically a smooth surface of cartilage. Okay, So that's kind of a special case of hyaline cartilage. The others that are listed here, your costal cartilages, your tracheal cartilages, and the tip of your nose are composed of hyaline cartilage, uh, which does have a perichondrium around the outside. Okay. Now, under the microscope, it appears basophilic. So what you're seeing here is a lot of basophilic staining in the matrix. Um, the matrix tends to be relatively uniformly de um, stained, um, unless it's a very actively dividing cartilage, in which case you're gonna see these isogenic groups. Um, and this cartilage can calcify with age, and so when the, that happens, calcification tends to uh, prevent diffusion of, uh, of nutrients. Um, and so it tends to cause the death of chondrocytes and therefore it tends to be replaced by bone. Okay? And that's actually one of the ways in which bone develops in your body as well, is through this calcification of cartilage and gradual replacement by bone tissue. Okay? Let's move on to the next tissue type. Well, before we do that, so there's an example here of a very young cartilage. So this is a very young What you're seeing here, so from here roughly to here, that's cartilage tissue. Okay, so this part right here, that's cartilage. And so you can see here are some of these isogenic groups, for example. They're fairly clearly visible here, so pretty obvious isogenic groups. And what we have out here is a perichondrium. And a perichondrium on this side as well. This is perichondrium as well. is a young cartilage because you can see isogenic groups and so you have these clusters of cells right next to one another uh, and you know very much big differences in the staining of the actual matrix. In comparison this is a more mature cartilage okay so that's right here if you notice here the matrix is is still somewhat basophilic but it's not as intensely stained um, and also the cells here are much more randomly distributed okay so you don't see these clusters at least not as much of the clusters on these isogenic groups they're not as obvious uh, they are down here so if you look in this region down here we're starting to see some isogenic groups and a little bit more of a difference in staining uh, in the matrix so that territorial matrix and interterritorial matrix are much more obvious but in the upper region of this slide, it's pretty uniformly staining. Uh, and just for completeness sake, all this material here, this very eosinophilic material here, is the perichondrium. Again, perichondrium doesn't have as much of the proteoglycan matrix, and so you have much more of the collagen being the dominant component there, and so that's why it's much more eosinophilic. Whereas in the cartilage matrix, the proteoglycans are definitely the more common component. Uh, the collagen is not as abundant, and so the basophilic staining is much more obvious with cartilage matrix. Okay? So that's highland cartilage, two examples, one more mature, one less mature. 
here is elastic cartilage. Now, if you want to see elastic fibers, obviously you need to be able to stain for them. And so this is why this here looks so odd, uh, because it was specifically stained for elastic fibers. And so what you're seeing these are these little individual kind of hairs sticking out from all over the place. So wherever you're seeing this material, um, you know, all of this stuff here, these fibers, these are all elastic fibers. We're not really seeing much um, else. Uh, again, the deeper you go, so this is the outer region, so here would be the perichondrium. Oops. Okay, it's a little bit, um, there's a little bit less elastic fibers there, uh, and as you go deeper, you go deeper into the cartilage. Okay, um, it is a very, very elastic and very flexible cartilage. So if you want to have a feeling for the difference, elastic cartilage is what makes up the external ear. So uh, not the ear lobe, but the other parts of your external ear. It's very flexible. Uh, and if you pull it in any direction, kind of try to fold it over, it'll spring right back. That's elasticity in action. Okay, that's elastic cartilage. Whereas if you try to press down on the tip of your nose, please don't do it too hard, but feel free to press down on the tip of your nose. It doesn't bend. Right? It doesn't bend very easily and very much, and that's not elastic. That's a highland cartilage. Okay, very hard, tough tissue. Okay, um, one of the problems with uh, not being vascularized is it doesn't heal very well. Okay, so if you ever break cartilage, it doesn't heal very well. Um, eventually, it does become replaced by bone um, in most cases, simply because. Um, in order to heal something, blood vessels have to come into the area, which means that and that's going to cause some calcification in that cartilage, and that's going to be, uh, meaning that's going to be replaced by bone. But elastic cartilage doesn't have as much of an issue with that, and also does not really calcify with age, as opposed to highland cartilage. Now, in terms of the histology, if you don't stain elastic fibers, you really won't see much of a difference between elastic cartilage and highland cartilage. Uh, really, the only thing that, that you might notice is that it's a bit more cellular. So the elastic cartilage has uh, more closely packed cells within its matrix, whereas highland cartilage has a little bit more space between the cells. Okay, let's move on to the last type, which is fibrocartilage, which really is technically more of a mixture. Uh, it's a, a bit of highland cartilage and dense regular connective tissue kind of combined into one. Okay, and so this is a, a very tough sort of tissue that is very much um, designed to be able to cushion, um, so especially forces that would kind of compress something, uh, you would have this something that would resist that compression uh, in the form of fiber cartilage, and you also have a lot of toughness added by having this dense regular connective tissue in place, um, because it's also going to resist a lot of the pulling as well. Okay, so you have a lot of tensile strength there because of that type one collagen, and so cushioning and also tensile strength are the, the features of fibrocartilage. Uh, so intervertebral discs uh, is one place where you'd find these, where you have a lot of compression just because you're standing up, and so you have a lot of pressure on your vertebrae from above. And the pubic symphysis is another place where you would have some compression periodically, but also potentially stretch, uh, especially if you're giving birth, for example. Okay. So uh, this is a very, very tough, tough type of cartilage, and so um, it has kind of properties of both um, highland cartilage and also dense regular connective tissue. Okay, so what you're seeing here on this slide, uh, in the middle is where we have the actual fibrocartilage. Okay, so if you look in this region right here, you'll notice that the cells are kind of arranged um, in a way that everything is kind of organized in this direction, so going up and down. Okay, now let me just erase that. So what you can see here are chondrocytes are arranged into fairly long rows of nuclei. So the isogenic groups are actually organized into these elongated clusters. And that's because there's no space to divide sideways here, okay? And that's because what we have in between are these dense bundles of type 1 collagen. That's that dense regular connective tissue that at least 
kind of looks like the same, has the same properties as a dense regular connective tissue, where you have these very thick bundles of collagen going up and down. And so what you have are these clusters of chondrocytes kind of stuck in between these very thick, dense bundles of type 1 collagen. Okay? So this is type 1 collagen. Okay, and so again, the type 1 collagen is there to provide that tensile strength, and the chondrocytes with their little bit of matrix around them, which is what you're seeing in these kind of basophilic regions here, kind of act like that hyaline cartilage where it's very hard to compress this. Okay, and so that's where that uh, compression resistance is coming from, is where you have these clusters of chondrocytes with a bit of their cartilage matrix because of the hydration in that matrix because of the proteoglycans you have this very high resistance to compression okay, and that's what you're seeing here so that's cartilage and so again that's type 2 collagen So proteoglycans. Okay. So um, that's fibrocartilage for you. Now, just for comparison, around the outside you have clusters of chondrocytes that you're seeing out here that are a bit more rounded. Right here around the outside, these are not feeling the same forces, and that's actually highland cartilage. Okay, so I think that pretty much covers the cartilage for this lab, and so we'll talk about bone next.